Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Martin. How are you doing, Martin? Hi, Matt. You alright? Yes, I'm doing. Ha- Happy New Year. It's 2021. Happy New Year. If you say yep. hindsight is 2020, I'm going to forget your name or something. I don't know. It's horrible. I cannot believe how, how many times I've seen that joke on Twitter. It's just horrible. Well, it isn't even a joke, is it really? Let's face it. Things can only get better. That's why I look at it. Well, I mean, we hope that that's true. <laughs> I mean, we, we thought that after 2019 was a dumpster fire, and then it, then 2020 came along and said, ha, 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 ha suckers. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, so it, it should be better. Um, so we're back after uh, a small, brief hiatus for the holiday period. Martin and I had a good holiday season. We're going to... Um, now, normal Linux podcast would do like a... Tutor- like a not tutorial. Um, predictions, right? Uh, we're not going to do that because Martin. I don't know if you, do you agree with this statement. You and I actually don't know what anything. <laughs> I mean, we don't know what's coming in, always... the, in, in the Linux this year. Why would we predict something? It'd be just silly. So we can't predict that this is going to be the year of the Linux desktop. Blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, every year is the, the year of the Linux desktop. It seems. I don't know, pedestrian, right? All right. So instead of doing predictions, what we're going to do is um, just a normal show. So we're going to start off with our usual, what have you been doing in Linux this week or the last couple of weeks? Martin, what have you been doing? Yep. So I uh, actually built and updated uh, my kernel for the first time in KDE Neon to 5.10 LTS. Um, all went fine. It took a, It took a fair while to do, though, but... Um, but, uh, settling down for Christmas, I decided, uh, to play some games, um, whether you've ever played that Jackbox party pack. Is that like, you don't hmm. know Jack or something? Yeah, I think it's something similar. So basically, um, you put it on your computer screen, you all join in using your tablets and your mobile devices, ask it, answer questions, do silly stuff. So I decided to, uh, give that a go because I've had it on my Steam library for years and years. Um, all went well. So I streamed it, um, on my NVIDIA, um, device. I set up Steam Link, uh, streamed it from Linux, no problem. Um, but somehow it knocked out my secondary mon- monitor. So I thought, oh, it's all well. It- it'll kick back in when I re, um, reboot. So nothing. Couldn't get it working. Uh, so I nuked and paved and installed your favorite distro. Which is? You installed Arch? Yep, got it in right. Got it in one. I installed Linux Mint 20.1 beta. (laughs) (laughs) And guess what? The same thing happened. Uh, You should have installed um, installed Arch, is what I'm saying. (laughs) Oh, well, it would have obviously worked straight away then. No, definitely. I I I don't know. I can't put it down to user error for it to go like that on on a clean install. Um, so it just gave me a quick, um, excuse to do a quick, uh, distro hop throughout the holiday season. So I'm currently trying out Ferran OS. And any further streaming I'll be doing from my windows, um, my, uh, well, my main rig in the front room. Mm. How about you? What you've been up to over this break? All right. So I've been doing a ton of just nerdy stuff. So I've been, Messing around with my NeoVim config. So originally, I probably about four episodes ago, I recommended a NeoVim config from some just some guy on the internet, and that's what I've been using for a while. But I found yep. it was just way too complicated, and it had a whole bunch of stuff that was meant for like coders and stuff. And I, you know, I'm I'm not a coder, <laughs> not even <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I can I do a little bit of HTML and CSS stuff, but mostly just to mess around with you know stuff on my system. So I I just completely uninstalled that and just decided to build my own from scratch and that's what I've been doing. I even did a couple of videos on it on the channel. Um, yeah, it's just something to do uh, to make it you know simple. You know, just and, and there's always something that um, kind of makes you feel better when you do something yourself other than steal something you know other people's stuff. So that, that's basically what I've been doing. I've also been I don't. <laughs> I've been messing around with some Firefox like layouts and stuff, but that's mostly just me being completely bored over the holiday season. You know? <laughs> so I don't know. I I have been 
waffling over the idea that maybe I want to try a different distro. I, I've got that itch you get kind of when you want a distro hop, and I'm like, oh, but my distro right now is working so well, and I've had it for so long. You know, Martin, here's something. I've never had a distro installed long enough for the kernel to go out of date. Never. Until this time. <laughs> Uh, usually I distro hop so much. I mean, I don't ever have to worry about the distro being unsupported or the kernel being unsupported. Uh, this time I am. I'm on the the, the last 4.9 uh, kernel, and it's you know just went out of support. And I'm gonna have to do what you did with the 5.10 here eventually. And I've never had to do that before, so I'm gonna have to learn how to do it. It's gonna be kind of fun. Uh, that'll probably be my chore for this week um, to figure out how to do that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, there's that Archbang Linux that came out the other day. Um, distro Watch, Archbang Linux, lightweight uh, distribution based on Arch Linux using the i3 window manager. It's fast, up to date, and suitable for both desktop and portable systems. I think I've seen it before. I don't think I've ever tried it. I might have to give it a look. I know there was another one that um, that I wanted to try out. It was like Heftor or something like that. It's, a, it's based on Arco, which I use now, but it's supposedly. Uh, aesthetically pleasing or something. I don't know. I'm thinking about just if if I do end up going through and uh, uh, hopping to a different distro, I'll probably just go ahead and see if I can actually install Arch again, like actually play an Arch. And then there's that crazy little voice in the back of my mind that says, "Hey Matt, why don't you learn how to install Gentoo?" <laughs> and I'm trying to beat that down with a stick because I watched a couple of Mental Outlaws video where where he talks about how to um install Gentoo. Like, oh, that, it, yeah. it, it can't be that hard. I can do it. I'm so going to fail. <laughs> Anyways. It's how long the videos are. It's like part one of 10 and they're like yeah. 45 minutes long each. Like well, that. then <laughs> you always have to, I mean, you have to build all of your packages on Gentoo, right? So uh, as, as much as that sounds like a, a, a nerd's dream, it also sounds like a big pain, you know, but uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know. More on that news to come. I'm sure I'll probably distro hop eventually. Um, I can't help myself. Anyway, so if you want to, so let's jump into the contact info. If you want to do uh, get in contact with us, you can do so. Uh, we're available on Twitter in multiple places. You can follow the podcast itself on Linux at the Linux Cat. That made no sense at all. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at the Linux Cast. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at MTWB. Martin's Martin Twit to you. You can find all these links in the either the video description or the podcast description, uh, and whatever podcast catcher you use or whatever. You can subscribe to the, all of our uh, feeds and such at thelinuxcast.org. You can follow. Us, you can contact us via email at thelinuxcast at gmail dot com. I know I promised that we were going to be getting a specific uh, email address for the podcast, and I am still planning on doing that. I just haven't found a reasonable host yet because I don't really want a web host. I just kind of want an email host. I, I haven't really found a good one yet. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Linuxcast. You can also, if you're interested, support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube where you'll find daily Linux videos. Um, most of them are god awful. I don't know why anybody would want to use watch them, but um, people. I mean, some people have been watching, like you know, a few people. That's, so I mean, there are apparently a few lunatics out there. Anyways, <laughs> you, you do cover you do cover niche niche areas. It isn't like um, news. So I mean, they'll just carry on uh, attracting votes. It's not like um, up to. No, what I mean, it's not like up to the minute. Oh, this is a the brand new sparkly distro of the the flavor of the day. I mean, you're covering Vim and things like that, and your yeah. config. So they 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 gain it over time. So yeah, well, that, and I'm not, not expecting to jump. go. Uh, I'm not expecting to be like Linus Tech Tips. <laughs> I, oh. I don't I don't have his charisma or his topics. <laughs> or his I, beard. Yeah. Or has he got? Has he shaved that off now? <laughs> yeah, I shaved I shaved my neck beard off. Um, I'm not have to, not have to regrow it, um, and it'll, and it'll take forever because I just do not grow facial hair well. Um, it comes in patchy. <laughs> and anyways, all right, let's jump into our news of the week. So, Martin, what were, what was the news that you picked this week? Yes, it's from Nine to Five Linux, and KDE will make Plasma Wayland ready for the masses in 2021. So is that is Wayland actually going to be ready now? 
There we go. Anyway, so KDE uh, developer Nat Graham um, shared uh, KDE's roadmap for 2021. Um, scanning through, um, one of the main points he said is, I'll be honest, before 2020, the plasma wayland session felt like a mess to me. Nothing worked properly. But all of this changed in 2020, suddenly things started working properly. I expect the trend of serious concentrated Wayland work to continue in 21. Um, so I've been improving various things um, up ahead. So we've got fingerprint support, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, it'll work with lock screens, um, K-Auth, Polkit, etc. Um, as well, finishing up the Brief Evolution theme. And I think a lot of people are happy in replacing the kickoff application launcher. Just mm. makes it look that little bit nicer. Um, and should, just some general tweaks, really. That's the only thing that really had, had popped out at me and the news. How about yourself? What did you catch? Well, just on kind of on that topic there. Um, oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Um, you know, I've never actually used Wayland outside of Fedora, but I was reading earlier this week that they had, because always the big, I mean, They've done a really good job of getting the Linux stuff kind of to work on Linux on on Wayland, but it was always kind of gaming that kind of was being held back. But um, there was something that was released this week, something some kind of extension for uh, Proton or whatever that uh, will allow uh, more Steam games to run on Wayland without using uh, X Wayland, and that's a big deal. I mean, that's just I mean. As, um, gaming has become such an important thing of people you know to do on Linux. Uh, you know, if you're going to have a different display server, you're going to actually need to be able to run that kind of stuff natively. And now, now that that is possible, um, Wayland is going to be big. I think um, it's going to be interesting. You know, because I'm a window manager guy, right? It'd be interesting to yeah. see. I mean, this is talk about niche. It's going to be interesting to see what window managers do for you know to go to transition over to the Wayland. I I three has already done it with Sway. Um, there's like a DWM version that works in in Wayland, but it's not supported anymore. So um, so some of the uh, like Openbox and even the ones that the the desktop environments use, like Mutter and um, like Compiz for Mate for Mate Mate or whatever, uh, those are going to be really interesting to see how they they port those over because you know the the way the Wayland server or the display server in Wayland you know talks to things, it's completely different. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting as well as um, with all the leaps and bounds KGE is doing mm-hmm. is um, with the Pine phone and see how all this uh, fingerprint, which I'm guessing the fingerprint support and things like that, um, they're writing up phones and uh, maybe some major branding. With the, I don't think the Pine phone has got fingerprint sensors. Obviously, like your ThinkPads and stuff like that has, mm-hmm. but maybe it's one for the future. Definitely, fingerprint. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's what I use on my Android phone to keep it nice and safe. So, yeah, yeah, looking good. All right. So mine was that uh, Deep in Linux twenty point one was released this last uh, this last week. I think it was, and um, mostly yeah. with improved performance and some. Uh, tweaks to the desktop settings behavior and stuff and uh, I, I actually have a video on this coming out tomorrow um, but I will say this it's very pretty but it has the weirdest way of partitioning hard drives um, it, it, <laughs> it, I mean it's like um, it's not a sn- small install is it oh no, no for, so first so first of all it requires 64 gigabytes of storage I mean like every other Linux distro out there will requires like 25 or so, and it's not like a, a, a C. it's not like something like say, hey, you only have 25 gigabytes to install. We're not going to install at all. Deepin won't install unless you have 65, and they they recommend or yeah. s- they recommend 128. And and no, for no, m- most people, that's going to be fine because you're going to be installing on a hard drive. But when you're installing in a virtual machine, it's kind of a you know because I'm just used to giving it 25 gigabytes and saying, hey, this yeah, is going to be perfectly yeah. fine, right? So that was the first thing. So I, you know, I set it up. It said, you know, sixty, you know, sixty-five gigabytes or whatever, sixty-four gigabytes. So I had to recreate the machine, and I get it installed with, you know, with a seventy-five gigabyte disk. And the way I partitioned it, it so it, it gave me two fifteen gigabyte partitions, two eleven gigabyte partitions, a twenty-two gigabyte partition, and then like a blank, uh, SD, 
uh, SDA2 partition that actually contained all f the four, f you know, other partitions. But there was like 30 gigabytes or something like that that you just completely don't have access to at all. Like, and, and then, just, you know, it's not like, it's not like that's where it was storing the root partition. The root partition was on the 22 gigabyte partition. The, there was a 15 and 11 that was just completely inaccessible. Do you think it could be for some sna snapshots or system backups? Two well, there lots was, of system backups, maybe. The one, the one eleven gigabyte um, partition was for backups, and you know, at first I thought it was like you know, well, you know, maybe they're using some uh, file sy system that's like you know ButterFS or ZFS or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you know, that could be weird because you know, I've never used those before, so maybe that's just what it does. Um, mm -hmm. No, it was using e ext4, so it's just it's not as if their file system had some awesome c snapshot capability or whatever. It's just ext4, which has existed for the last twenty years and has nothing special about it. Um, and, and then I thought maybe, well, you want to know, what? maybe because I'm installing this in a virtual machine, maybe it does something weird with the EFI and UEFI stuff because when you're installing, you know, UE UEFI stuff, it creates that one minuscule partition and then several other ones. You know, that's because it's weird, right? Hmm. I mean, if that's the case, it's it's very weird that it kind of put it all in, you know, one like I don't know. It was very weird, um, and I, I know I kind of got uh, sidetracked and I got sidetracked in the video that I made too, because I, I I was looking at their because one of the new programs that they uh, came out with for this twenty point one is a, is like a, a fork of GNOME Discs. It's you know, like, so they call it Disk yeah. Manager or something. <clears throat> Um, and it's like everything else, it's pretty. But then I realized, like, like, there's seven partitions on this thing. Why do I need seven partitions? And why is it that when I go to File Manager, I can only access two of them? <laughs> I mean, it's very weird. So that's so I I went on a, on a totally weird like um uh rabbit hole trying to figure out why I couldn't access like half of the storage I gave this machine. It was very odd. Um, but Deepin, have you ever tried Deepin Martin? Yeah, um, uh, tried a couple of months back. Um, so I'd, um, I dual boot booted it back then. Well, tried to, and then it says needs this much. And I'm like, what? Um, so I thought, I'm not throwing that much up just to, um, uh, give something a test. And later on, I, um, did it in, um, virtual, in a VM. Mm. And I, th I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it just wasn't, uh, it whether I'd done something wrong or I'd actually did do it to the hard actually I did try to do it to the hard drive eventually I just swapped out a hard drive got a spare one it just wasn't booting up there's just something wrong with my system I think at the time it was before I had VM and um, opened up my BIOS I think that's what it is um, but I've looked at videos on it and yeah it seems nice but I think it's rather heavy for that added bit of niceness and rounded corners in my opinion yeah uh, i think is I, it heavy i mean i know you've got a decent machine i mean m mine's pretty <clears throat> old but for for, for what it'd give me and, and, and the amount of system resource you know i, I just didn't think. I mean, obviously, at a decent one, you don't notice so much. But yeah, it was very heavy. Um, and, and in the virtual machine, it kind of uh, it just turns off. Uh, you, like usually, usual when you use a virtual machine, it turns off the animations and stuff. And even with the animations off, it was still kind of. I mean, it was okay. It definitely wasn't Fedora. Fedora was when I installed Fedora on the virtual machine. It was like, man, this is running on metal. This is, <laughs> I, I, I've had some you know bare metal installs of out Linux operating systems on a really good computer that don't run this fast. And but it wasn't the that way with Deepin. I think my biggest problem with Deepin, <clears throat> excuse me, I know a lot of people complain. Like, oh, it's a Chinese distro. I don't, I don't care that it's developed by people in Chinese China. <laughs> developed by people <laughs> in Chinese. <laughs> I, I, it doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me at all. I, I'm not worried about them sending any information back to the you know Chinese government. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm more. Uh, it's it more bothers me that they're 
they put out uh, an English language distribution at, at all because you can tell there's a lot of stuff in there that still just has not been translated. Like there's there the new browser stuff has still has you know, Mandarin you know characters or whatever in it. Um, if you go to their app store, you're not presented presented with like an English you know app store or whatever or a you know whatever you know you're it's it's all in Chinese um, and that's a white American complaining about it, but I mean, it's available here, right? So, um, it's just, yeah. inter- it's just interesting that they haven't, it feels like they haven't developed their community well enough to kind of, cause I mean, usually when there's like, cause there's like a, a an Italian, uh, distribution. I'm not sure what it is. And that, that, um, there's a, there's a Debian spinoff that focuses on, uh, uh, one of the different run it, you like, they, they take system D out of Debian and that's developed in like Germany. It's and it's developed in German, but they've developed a community that does has done such a good job of you know uh, translating and, and stuff like that. Um, it just doesn't feel like uh, Deepin has done that kind of work quite as well as other yeah. does. I think it's a case as well as um, the Chinese are thinking. Well, we're sick and tired of these blooming American spying on us. I mean, <laughs> in all fairness. There was some uh, third-party data going back and for, forth um, f- for various analytics, uh, but I think they, they quashed that anyway. That, it was nothing more than any, anything else. It was just uh, obviously because it's Chinese and bloody hell. I don't think Donald Trump uses his, as his distro. Let's put it that way. Right. All right. Let's move on to our main topic. So our main topic today is kind of, how would I put it, esoteric? Uh, a little rare, a little weird. Um, a few months ago, uh, there was a, maybe even close to a year ago, maybe. Um, I'm not actually sure when this th- thing went down. Um, but they were talking, and this is more supposed specifically on GNOME and GTK verse things, is that basically the way GTK themes, like, you know, when you want to change the theme to like Arc Dark or, uh, you know, Papyrus Icon theme or whatever, but basically all that stuff is actually a hack that kind of lives on top of GNOME. It's not because GNOME wasn't actually meant to be able to theme anything. Um, and that's the reason why you can't, in a, in a vanilla GNOME uh, install, you can't just theme something, you have to install GNOME Tweaks. And, um, you know, because, I mean, it's a hack. So the GNOME team, which is notorious for not wanting people to tweak things, uh, has basically come out and said, you know, we're not going to we're, – we're thinking about uh, removing the ability to theme things completely. And the community kind of went, you know, crazy over that. And so I, what I kind of want to talk about was um, kind of t- two ways. Do you think that – Theming is an important thing on Linux, um, and also, do you think GNOME is uh, taking the easy way out by, you know, saying we're just going to take themes out instead of trying to develop an actual uh, way of theming? So, like on KDE, you use KDE. Theming is built into KDE, and that's not a hack. That's actually something that you can actually do. It's a little confusing, uh, but uh, you know, it's there, and it. It comes out of the box, whereas GNOME you have to do a kind of a, um, you know, a hack to get it to work. Um, so yeah, why don't well, we go uh, on the, the first one, Martin? What are you talk about? Yeah. Well, uh, what was the first one again? Do I think? Do you think so theming is import- uh, important? On yeah. Linux? Oh gosh. Yeah, of course. At the end of the day, it's what you make it, what you feel comfortable with. I mean, people say, "Oh, try this. It's like Windows. Try that. It's like Mac." Or you like this is like XP, things like this. I think theming is very important. I mean, I don't know about yourself. It says I get anything. It, it, it's all in dark mode. I, I want to just re- reduce eye strain and just concentrate e- exactly where I'm looking at. Uh, I like to re- reduce that, change things around, change some fonts, things like that. So I, I, I do think it's important. At the end of the day, we're all tinkerers. And we do love getting that little bit extra out of our machine. I mean, even even on Windows, if you download and install Rainme to just to get some extra, go back to Windows bloody blinds as well, things like that. I mean, people always want want to enjoy um, theming the, the desktop environment. I mean, essentially, I mean, a bit like yourself, 
with your writing and things like that, you're, you're actually living in that environment all day. So you want that spot on exactly how you like it. Uh, and with all your shortcuts and this and that, and just to get around you and have it just a nice experience, not clunky. And I mean, going on to your second part, when I was looking into what desktop environment to use, and it was like, oh yeah, this is uh, GNOME. Um, what you got to do, install GNOME. Next thing to do, install GNOME twe- tweaks. It's like, well, so I've got to install it. And then I've got to install something else to make it that little bit better. Why are they not letting you install that? I mean, I, I, I could probably understand it. They've developed it and they don't want their apps. I, I'm, I'm sure if you tweak it, that you tw- tweak it so much and it, you're going to break it, aren't you? Essentially. Um, but I, I, I just didn't like the look of GNOME anyway, let alone to download something else just to tweak it just to get that little bit out of it just to make it look that little bit better when other um, desktop environments have uh, have got that inbuilt really yeah Uh, it's just a head scratcher but it's weird because the vanilla gnome like theme or whatever is but ugly i mean it's it's yeah. It's not good looking. The, the, the Adawata icons or whatever. I mean, it's better than it was before. But like, even but Martin, even like Ubuntu will theme like they they use GNOME, but they have to put a th- coat of paint over it to make it actually look good. Papa West does the same thing. Uh, you know, so I mean, it, it's obviously something that people want. And it's it feels weird that GNOME would come out and say. You know, because this is a hack, we're thinking about taking it away. Um, instead of saying, but, you know, let's uh, come up with an API or something where people can actually go through and, you know, uh, create themes, in, you know, in, in a way that's not a hacky w- way of doing things. Well, exactly. I mean, I'll bang on, on about KGE, but it, it, all I've got to do is go into um, choose it. Right, what do I want to pick? Right, let's have a look. Uh, different cursors. Right, let's have a quick search from within the discovery, whichever it was. Um, pick what I like, download it, install it, get it working, uh, and that's it, really. I mean, no, I mean, it, it's not, it just looks like 2005. I mean, I, I, I know, like you say, they'll, they'll heavily skid it, but they're working closely with the guys. And I just can't understand why they just wouldn't say, right, we'll open up this page, um, we'll get this work and get some... At the end of the day, the community's there just as much as they're good so they could help and help do it or there's a little bug here, we could fix that, iron that out. I mean, I I just can't understand it. I mean, and it's not particularly a lightweight thing either, is it? No. No. Well, yeah, and theming, I mean... Adding a thing that's not going to make GNOME any slower. <laughs> at least I in, suppose, I, yeah, true. Look at right, that way, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, it's kind of unfair because GNOME has gotten way faster in the last couple, you know, releases. But I mean, at least it used to be like when this first kind of became a thing, you know, an issue. GNOME was like really slow. It was never the themes that made it slow. It was those really crap animations that you know oh we had to uh, we have to unfurl in a wave that your your application drawer and it's going to take five minutes <laughs> i mean but it's going to look pretty i mean it's just so dumb um I, so my thing is on this theming thing is when i first i like to uh, like you said all linux people are tw- are tinkers right they like to, to, to tweak things and i yeah, I found my people when I decided that I was going to move to Linux because everybody here is just like me. They like to tweak things, and I, that's that's what I love to do. I, I I can't tell you the number of hours I've spent. That's one of the reasons why I use window managers is because I can go through and tweak things to my heart's content. You know, I can just spend hours and hours just, hey, you want to? Oh, I'm going to alter this color by you know, you know, four percentage points to the blue or whatever, and <laughs> just to make it awesome. Um, that's the kind of guy I am, and it, it, it's. When I before I start, started using window managers, I would use KDE because KDE, you know, had a much more uh, acceptable uh, uh, way of 
you know, tweaking things, not only with themes, but with, you know, putting panels in different places and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Whereas Gnome just kind of felt rigid, like, you, you know, this is how good the Gnome team wants you to use it. And if you don't want to use it this way, then you don't have to use Gnome at all, you know, and that's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And that, like with Katie, I understand Katie gets hit a lot with, um, with the idea that they've crammed so much stuff into the settings application that it's so confusing that nobody can use it. I mean, it's I mean, it's a big complaint. They also get complained about like the Discover has been the same for like the last five years, and you know it, it, it's kind of bad. Um, but at least KDE, you get the feeling that you know they're coming up with new ideas, and yes, sometimes the new ideas are kind of you know shoved on and tacked on with your know, duct tape and bailing wire or whatever but eventually they kind of get massaged into the you know the the desktop environment and it becomes part of a thing and you have all these options and it's amazing whereas the gnome team seems like you know what we're gonna pull stuff out we're gonna keep taking features out and away from you to uh improve the experience into our vision of whatever it should be and that's uh you know that's one way to do it it, it if you're Apple, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of what Apple does is they, they have to have this fierce iron grip on of control over their operating system. And that's kind of what Gnome reminds me of it. it and it's another it's another like elementary OS kind of does this thing, too, where they kind of have to have firm control over every little thing. And that's cool. It creates a nice user experience for uh windows users or mac users but if you're a you know a linux user you're an experienced linux user who wants to uh you know t tweak things and tinker and stuff it, it's it feels like you're kind of in a jail you're 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 in a cell uh where you can't do things that you, you know the way you want to do it and that's really what linux is all about is being able to do whatever the hell you want to do right so well, it's all down to the freedom as well i mean <clears throat> I mean, when I first used GNOME years and years ago, obviously I didn't know I was using it. I just thought on Ubuntu, um, off a of CD, I just thought, oh my God, this is horrible. This is just horrible. I mean, obviously if I drilled down and got, I got to use it, I probably only tried it for an hour or two. I just thought it wasn't a case of, oh, this isn't Windows. It was a case of I just, I just don't like the way it is. I, I, there was just something, whether it was because it was still heavy then and I was on a rubbish computer, as I've always been. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've never really had no one when I've been my distro hopping. It, it, it's always been any of the others, to be fair, XFCE. Um, I've recently gone on to KDE, but um, it, 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 getting used to what you know, and essentially, if, if you used to know and you used to know tweaks and they're essentially going to take that away with you i mean exactly obviously all power to them they want their their um desktop environments look as as good as possible but it doesn't particularly look good that's why they've got gnome tweaks and that's the end of it i think mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well i guess we'll have to wait and see because it'll be interesting because they just, they're making a whole bunch of changes in gnome 40 um and a lot of those are going to be like user experience and user user interface changes. So it'll be interesting to see how they uh, if they make any changes to the way things are available to think to theme and stuff. So mm -hmm. all right, so let's move on to our apps of the week. So Martin, why don't you talk us about your app of the week? Right. So for the um, the holiday period, I've had a bit of time on my hands, as so we all, and I thought I'll, I'll sort out my. Um, pictures and my videos and things like that so i just had a quick look to see what i could find and it was it's called Shotwell. um i think it's probably on most uh of your it, distros wherever you look for i know it's um just called photos on kde but it's actually downloaded Shotwell. um so all you basically do get it up and running plug in your digital camera so you can or your um your SD card, and it imports everything in, drops it in your My Photos, and sorts it out in date. And 
it, it's just really, really good. Sorts all your videos. You can rate them with different stars. You, you can put all your tags in, which you can do with most others. I've just found it quite invaluable at this time or, without having to, you know, do it manually. And because I've got that many of the same pictures on different SD cards, it was nice just to get them all into one place and let a program just sort it out by the years and get rid of all the duplicates, obviously. I'll, I'll keep hold of them for future, but that's a really good shot well, it's called, um, just for um, organising your collection, which I should have done a while ago, because I've got that many stashed on Amazon or Google Photos. That'll be the next one to download them and import them and, and just make that a bit more streamlined. So that's what I've been playing about with. How about yourself? All right, so as usual, mine has something to do with a terminal, so I, I can't break traditional <laughs> tradition. Um, I discovered uh, something called scratch pads. In this isn't really a uh, window manager specific thing, but if um, you do a lot of stuff in the terminal, but you also don't want like dozens of terminals just lying around all your workspaces, there's these things called scratch pads, and you can assign them to key bindings, and it will just basically bring up a uh, a, a terminal uh, that will that exists in a workspace that really doesn't show up. So it's like on a like a uh, an, an invisible workspace, and it's great mostly because it's just available anywhere you are. You just hit this key binding, and then your terminal comes up. I've been using it for NC Spot, which is my Spotify client. I've also been using it for like BPI Top, which is just a you know system hunter or whatever. But you can also, uh, if you use a program called T Drop, you can also assign uh, GUI applications to a scratch pad. So you could put like, Spotify or, uh, you know, um, your to do list or whatever on a scratch pad and just assign that scratch pad to a key binding and it's there, whatever workspace you're on, you just press that and it pops up. It's really cool. Um, I'm pretty sure it would work in a desktop environment as well. Um, and this T drop is just a, um, a you know a, an agnostic version of way of, of doing scratch pads but if you use a window manager i3 has these zwm has these um i think you have to use t-drop for bspwm but i think like awesome and uh xmonad and stuff all have built-in scratch pad functionality or or the ability to add that in like if you're in dwm you have to patch but um yeah i I, I, it seems sounds so cliche to say, "Oh my God, this has changed the way I've used Linux," but it, it just it it kind of has because it's it's so nice just to be able to say, you know, mod Y, and all of a sudden I have my music player right there. I don't have to you know switch to a different workspace. I don't have to remember which of the twenty workspaces I have where my music player is coming. So if you, you, you know you know that really terrible problem where oh my god there's audio playing around somewhere on my computer i don't know where it's coming from how am i supposed to pause it um well now i know where it's always is and it's available whenever i want so that's really cool um so yeah that's my pick uh, you can find links to all this stuff and links to all of our uh news topics and main topics and stuff in the show notes you can also make sure you subscribe to us on youtube and anchor and spotify and all that stuff and uh, we will be back uh next week our topic for next week is uh linux file systems martin's going to school me on linux file systems because i've never used anything other than ext4 before so uh yep so it's going to be linux file systems and um um sd card file systems as well so so you can interchange them and then things like that between Sound. windows and linux because they don't always get on do they let's face uh, it. we need to talk about ntfs and the reason why it has really weird permissions on linux i want I, mean, <laughs> oh, I know it sounds no. it sounds nerdy but if you if you have to use windows you have to use ntfs or fat and chances are you probably want to use it We'll talk about it next week, but it's. I'm going to go on a rant. Just be prepared for that. Right, anyways, uh, no time. we'll be back next week. Uh, thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you then. Excellent. Take care, guys. Cheers, Matt.